So Nuance Bro interviewed gun control activists in Nashville, Tennessee. He released an amazing video with a ton of amazing interviews. We're going to be unpacking a handful of those conversations today. But before we do, you guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is sponsored by my good friends over at Undertack, the official underwear sponsor of this channel. More on them in a bit. But if you haven't ordered your first pair of Undertack underwear, make today that day. Before we jump into this video, it is called Interviewing Gun Control Activists in Nashville. If you guys aren't familiar with Nuance Bro, he does a lot of um, street videos. He does a lot of breakdowns, deep dives on his channel. Go check him out. Let's jump into the video. We're out here because we believe that guns need to be banned. Guns do not need to be in our area and we want to make sure when every kid goes to school, every single parent knows that they're safe. So you want to ban on all guns? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so obviously we've had a lot of Supreme Court. At least he's being totally straightforward. A lot of people beat around the bush with this question. He just says he wants to ban every single gun. Okay. Decisions over the last decade or so that have reaffirmed the Second Amendment right of people to keep and bear arms. Would you support an appeal of the Second Amendment in order to achieve that? Yes. Wow. Do you feel like that's practical in this country? I feel like the issue has gone, it's gone pretty bad and it's going to take a long time for all guns to be out of our system. But I feel like if right now with everyone here, if we take a step to try to eliminate as many guns as possible, we can have a better future because the biggest pandemic right now in America is guns. It really is. He didn't, he didn't answer his question. Is it, is it practical? He said everybody there. What is there? Maybe, what, 1,000 people there? 2,000 people? 3,000 people at the protest? Perhaps more. You have over 300 million guns in the United States. So what is a practical solution? Is it a practical solution to say that you are going to just ban every single firearm? And if so, how are you going to go about doing that? Kicking down doors? I often, you know, we've, we've, we filmed a handful of these, these videos and I often ask people just what, what's the next step because you can say that, but what is the next step? Are you going to advocate for kicking down people's doors and stealing their firearms? Is that, is, do you, do you really think that that's going to work out well? What do you say to people who say that, well, they own their gun for self-defense and that self-defense, uh, you know, guns are used in self-defense between anywhere 500,000 to two and a half million times per year, according to CDC-backed uh, studies. And, you know, you have people who are women who maybe uh, have protective orders against stalkers or uh, ex-boyfriends or husbands who want to protect themselves and their child against yeah. this and they can't always rely on yeah. police for what. He, he's Nuance Bros painting a real life scenario here where somebody may feel the need for a firearm. A woman, the great equalizer is that firearm. Um, really great, kind of bringing it on a more personal level so somebody can kind of understand the example that you're providing. Whatever reason or they don't trust police, what do you say to people like that? And everyone's subjected to their belief whether they want to support guns or not. And I, I, it's really sad how a lot of people, they feel like the gun's the only situation and it's the only solution, but I feel like if we all can come together as a country and believe that you don't need arms to protect yourself, we can all be a united nation and want peace and we can eliminate guns. If we look at different countries, they have a lot less guns and they're more so of a safer country. So what are some examples that come to mind when you think? Um, well, Nuance is, Nuance is asking great questions here, but also the guy's not really answering the questions here. But as you can see, the answers are oftentimes this, they're, they're very ideological. They're very you know, that, that utopia. Well, we could all just come together. That would be so great. Well, yeah, ban crime, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of that mentality. The only problem is the greatest threat to what he's saying there is reality kicks in and people do bad things. By the way, this video is going to be long. I will try to keep my commentary to somewhat of a minimum, uh, but it is going to be a longer video. So make sure you're buckling your seatbelts. Wait, wait, could you like repeat that? So what countries do you think about when you think about that? I think about countries like Switzerland. Like when I hear about it, they talk about how peaceful it is and how there's not a lot of like issues and a lot of violence. Switzerland has a, a pretty, they, they, they have a lot of firearms. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor. I am talking about Undertack, which I would confidently argue is the most comfortable pair of men's boxers ever created. And these aren't just normal pairs of underwear. They've been tested by special forces units in places that I'm not even authorized to talk about. But that's not all. Undertack is made with modal, which is like 
cotton on steroids. It's 50% more moisture wicking, naturally antimicrobial, and it's way softer. They come with a sturdy yet comfortable extra wide waistband and the fly design is brilliantly straightforward. UnderTac is durable, ultra light, fade resistant, and shrink resistant. And here's the best part, they're almost 30% less than the competition. Go pick up a drawer full today. I'm wearing them right now. They are incredibly comfortable and I promise you guys will not regret it. Get 20% off site wide with the offer code CLUG20. That's a special offer code just for my viewers, get 20% off site-wide. Take advantage of that. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. And by the way, quick final note, UnderTAC donates a portion of its profits to veteran-run organizations actively fighting human trafficking. That's getundertack.com, getundertack.com. Offer code CLUG20 for 20% off. Let's get back to the video. And even if you look in like countries like Korea and stuff, they don't have this kind of issue. Well, you mentioned Switzerland. Their people actually can own fully automatic firearms, which a lot more easily than they can in the United States. Yeah. And they actually have, relative to the rest of the world, a very high rate of gun ownership. I think uh, something like over 30 per one uh, per 100 people, so like 30 percent. Well, thir 30 guns for every 100 people, which is a lot higher than most countries in the world that have. I mean, you, you look at some of the ones in South and Central America, Honduras, uh, El Salvador back in the day, uh, you know, Venezuela, yeah. you know, you look at Jamaica and all these countries, they have very low rates of gun ownership, very strict gun control, but they have much higher homicide rates in the United States. It's, it, it, yeah, so he brings that up because a lot of it really, when it comes down to it, a lot of these people just think in their heads, more guns means more deaths and, and more crime and, and all of that. But a lot of it actually has to do with the society, the culture, uh, all of that. Nuance did a fantastic job right there though at pointing at these other countries that have incredibly strict gun laws. But they have all these other issues and therefore have a higher homicide rate in their countries than we have in America. America is not the highest homicide rate in the world, but we have by far the most firearms in the world. We're not even the highest uh, mass shootings per capita in the world. Next conversation. And Just keep them. People on the streets do not need to be carrying assault weapons of any kind. It's yeah. crazy to me. Yeah, they're made for war. They're not made for just anybody to be able to buy one. Sure. And what, how would you define that? Like, if you had to make legislation and say these guns are banned, they count as assault rifles, weapons. I don't know which terminology you want to use, but like, what is that? Yeah. Well, I mean, like. Background checks, like there needs to be more. Um, You're not answering the question. <laughs> going into checking out who's actually buying these guns, and like mental health is such an issue in this country. Um, and these people with severe mental health issues have access to these assault rifles, and um, that's why school shootings keep happening. So. So Something like, has to change. It seems yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, she's she's partially there when it comes to focusing on the mental health. A lot of people have have trouble understanding that removing somebody's firearm doesn't get rid, doesn't cure, you know, a homicidal maniac. Giving them the ability to own a firearm or a car or whatever it may be. You know, you might have, we could use the example in the Waukesha parade where. Uh, Daryl Brooks rammed down dozens of people, killing minimum six. You know, these items, these inanimate objects, don't create the homicidal maniac. It's the fact that we have so many homicidal maniacs in the country that are just being completely ignored by their communities. And not just by communities, but also local officials as well. So she did technically avoid answering that question of defining what the assault weapon was. She was saying assault weapon the reason why Nuance Bro is kind of asking this question is because a lot of people don't seem to understand exactly what that is or what they're talking about. Because when you really get down to it, it seems as though the argument that they're making could be made for just about every single firearm. Because the problem that they are trying to address is the homicidal maniacs in a society. Homicidal maniacs can use anything to hurt people. It seems like you support background checks, mental health checks, but again, what is an assault weapon rifle? How would you define that if we were to like ban those? You say those types of guns you can't have. I mean, guns made for like mass destruction, right? Like there's a difference between those kinds of guns and guns that are yeah. handheld, you know, just meant for protection. Like I'm not really for guns, period, but I, I mean, there's a huge difference between an assault rifle that's meant for mass destruction and killing a mass amount of people 
than an, you know, a handheld gun that's just meant to protect yourself or your family. Well, for example, we're here because of a school shooting that happened here in Nashville. The deadliest school shooting in America, do you know what it, what it is and when it happened? Was it Columbine? No, no. no. Nope. I'll answer the question for him. He answers it here. But the deadliest school shooting in the United States history was Virginia Tech. He used two pistols and killed 32 people, 33 people total, including the perpetrator. So when these people are making this argument of weapons of mass destruction, first, well, I mean, referring to a, a semi-auto rifle that way is a, a, a little over the top, but what they're trying to say is this gun is scarier and more deadly, and there are differences between rifles and pistols. We get that. But what they're saying is this will stop the shooting. And is that true? Is that true? Will it stop the shooting? Or are you just banning a firearm that tens of millions of Americans own? Because the largest school shooting in U.S. history was Virginia Tech. Would it have stopped Virginia Tech? No. There are other, other things that could have, though. Who is using two handguns. So would that fall under what you're talking about, like this destructive capacity type weapon? Well, yeah, and that's why it's like they're, they're both, you know, they can both be destructive. And, and that again, that's why it's more rules and regulations when it comes to who has access and who's who can buy it and like i'm pretty so i i'm gonna cut her off um it, it is true that a lot of these mass shootings that we see a lot of these shootings just in general they're either using illegal firearms they're um getting past the authorities because for some reason they were released from prison after a violent crime and they're still allowed to go about their business the greatest problem that we have in this country, I, I think the first guy actually said that we have a uh, the, the biggest pandemic is guns. Well, the biggest pandemic is actually allowing crazy people to be roaming the streets. These left wing DAs in these cities, they pretty much allow violent criminals back on the street after their their fifth offense. It is it, it's this it's this woke ideology that says don't keep them in prison. Just keep them back on the street so people can't call us racist or whatever it may be. We have tons of violent people on the street that absolutely should not be. I've brought up Club Q multiple times in past videos. That's just another example of authorities failing to do their job. The individual that shot up Club Q, the mass shooter, had previously been in trouble for kidnapping and a bomb threat and was still able to go about his business, was still roaming the streets with the rest of us. Pretty sure the, the shooter for the school shooting that we're protesting today like bought some of the weapons online. Well, no, she went through a background check. To, oh, to get the, okay. Yeah. So, obviously their background checks aren't <laughs> working. And again, like, mental health is a hard, it, it can be a hard thing to to diagnose. And Correct. there's so many different issues in this country contributing to that and contributing to the insanity that these people yeah. are experiencing that causes them to do destructive things like I this. I want to get to the mental health portion in a bit, but I do really want to hone down on this part we were talking about, because you mentioned a very specific policy proposal about assault weapons, assault rifles. There's. Uh, this is, I think, third time's the charm. Let's see if she answers what a, what a uh, assault weapon is to her. A lot of confusion about this on the Hill, about what constitutes, what counts as something like that. So yeah. when I mentioned the Virginia Tech example being handguns, I, I didn't get the answer. Did you think that did qualify as like a destructive weapon that should be banned and counted as an assault weapon or not? And how would you differentiate between like that and like a normal handgun? Like what it's, a, it's a great question. And what he's trying to get, get at is what is your justification? What is your reasoning behind you saying banning assault weapons? What is that? It's not a trick question. What is that? Because that really tells us what your agenda is. If you're counting semi-auto pistols in that assault weapon uh, you know, umbrella that you're saying, which many are actually um, jumping over to that argument now, is saying that that's also a military weapon and they also want to ban that because that's always been the agenda is all guns, not some guns. He's trying to expose the truth of her argument, the actual truth uh, that, that, that she has, and she's hiding behind this very vague word. So Nuance Bro is trying to get clarification on that. Great job, Nuance Bro. What's the difference? I mean... I don't really know. I feel like I'm not maybe informed enough to speak on that. Um. You're at a protest, protesting for more gun control, and you don't know the difference? You don't know what you're looking to ban? You don't know, why are you there? 
again, in the majority of these instances, these people already should be behind bars or should not be allowed to own firearms in the, in the majority of these situations. And because they are allowed back on the streets, because they are allowed to roam around with the rest of us, they end up doing something absolutely crazy. And then instead of blaming DAs or local authorities or whatever it may be, they point the, the, the finger at you for being a Second Amendment advocate. Next interview. Um, for me, I would like to see them taking away like semi-automatics and automatics from civilians. And I, my personal belief is that only like our army and maybe even cops, if it, if they have to have them, um, to only have those types of guns. So we, as you know, a community, as a country, can feel safer and be safe. Uh, really quick, I do want to mention the difference between semi-auto and, and full auto. Uh, I just got to clarify for the people that are not gun people out there, full auto meaning pull the trigger and you have every single round firing one after the other. You just need to pull the trigger once and it's going to be automatic. Okay, <laughs> maybe that's a bad way to explain it. Semi-auto is pull the trigger once, one bullet goes out, then you have to pull the trigger again for another bullet to go out. That's virtually... Most rifles being sold today, that's most pistols being sold today, many shotguns are like that. Uh, I, I would argue the, the overwhelming majority of firearms being sold today are semi-auto. So banning semi-automatics, that basically means almost all handguns, uh, the, the, you know, the most popular rifle in America, so you would want to ban most, almost all handguns and rifle, like these semi-automatic rifles? Yes. Yeah. So, so even though those are the ones that are primarily used for self-defense in this country, you'd want to ban all handguns. Um, it seems like the courts have actually come out against that, saying that's unconstitutional to ban handguns. Uh, so how would you effectively fight against something like that? Well, when our Constitution was written and our amendment saying that we have a right to have guns, it was back in the day when we had muskets and we could fire one bullet at a time. And that is enough to protect you. And like in case of a robber comes in with a, like a crowbar or what you know. If there's two robbers. Well, you know, a softball bat always worked for me. What if you miss? A softball Wait, you've bat. You've been, you've, you've, you fought off like home invaders with a baseball. Not base home invaders, but people, yeah. But not home invaders who are armed. <laughs> I mean. What would you do in that case? Um. I mean, you can always call the cops. You can so, so hide. They're, so they're you can call the cops. You know what they say? Uh, when, when, when seconds count, when, you're, when your life is, is uh, under great threat, when seconds count, the cops are just minutes, minutes away. So you'll be, you'll be totally fine. Breaking into your house and you're like, hold on. Hey, can you guys get here in 30 minutes and uh, stop these guys and put me in a body bag? Is that what you're saying? No, but like, if you have something heavy and that you can use, it could work. I feel I mean, like I'm in saying, that situation would be better to just run out of your own house if you don't have the ability to yes, effectively that, protect that too, yourself. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm just not very sold on uh, on her game plan there for everyone. I mean, this, this is her advice. If you are under threat, if there's armed individuals in, on your property, if, you, if, if your life is in danger, just call the cops, you guys. <laughs> You'll be good. Just ask them to wait, though, before, uh, you know, just to give the cops a bit of a head start. Ask them, to, hey, wait a couple of minutes. I'm calling the cops right now. Just before you do what you're going to do, just give me, give me a little bit of time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I will say one thing that's great about this video, and I, I'm assuming that most of Nuance Bro's videos are like this. One thing that's great about this video is he does a fantastic job remaining very polite, uh, giving factual information, laying out real scenarios for people that aren't just total gotchas or anything like that. They're just real questions. And then also the proper amount of pushback. You know, I know a lot of people, I see a lot of you guys in the comment section get really upset if, if there's not a proper amount of pushback in certain videos. Some videos we kind of change and we just let people speak. And then others, uh, there's a little bit more pushback, obviously. This is an excellent amount of pushback to make sure that the conversation is incredibly educational. Um, you know, you watch this and you, and you actually learn a lot. So it's a, you learn about these people's ideas. You learn about more of <laughs> reality from Nuance Bro's side. He does a fantastic job with that. If they say something crazy, he doesn't just let, let them, you know, say their thing. He, he actually tries to respectfully push back on it. So great job on that. So we're here at the state capitol. Obviously, legislation is passed here. Uh, what kind of legislation would you like to see passed about this? 
I would definitely like them to ban all assault rifles. I would also like them to up security around schools and by schools and by people who work with schools. Okay. I feel like she's she's onto something here. Every like all these Capitol buildings are being manned by police right now. If you really want to protect the kids, you would do the same thing for them. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the first things. I mean, you're the first person 100%. I've heard actually talk about security at schools at this place. Uh, I, I spoke to a mother earlier who said the idea of having more armed people at schools, whether that be, I guess, teachers or police officers, is like unconscionable to her. But this is something that you favor. I definitely think that it would be helpful. I think that we as adults have to help our kids understand why those people are there so they're not afraid of them. Because right yeah, um, no, she's she's totally spot on uh, about that. <laughs> not about the quote unquote uh, general assault weapons term that basically is just an argument for a blanket gun ban. But what she's saying right there, a lot of people at these protests actually, because we've been to a handful, I'm sure you guys have watched the videos um, and just talked to people on the street about Second Amendment rights and, and all of that, AR-15s, everything. A lot of people will actually be opposed to this idea, op opposed to the idea that, in my view, really just confronts today's reality, that evil people exist and they will go after easier targets. Actually allowing for schools to be, to have security guards similar to your local bank or jewelry stores or politicians or political buildings, whatever it may be, if you see that it becomes common sense that, hey, that's actually a deterrent for people wanting to do damage to individuals. But I feel like if most of your tax money is going towards that and your kids are going to these schools, they need protection whether we like it, whether we like them to be there or not. I understand like not wanting to walk through all of that in the morning and that is scary for them, but to protect my kid, I think I would be willing to. Yeah, yeah and I would also argue, uh, depending on the community, I, I'm sure that this could be very different depending on the community, but many communities, there needs to be great programs when it comes to police officers and the community. And there's, I, I've actually been seeing a lot more of that, which is always fantastic. Could be scary to some children that maybe have heard bad stories from their parents, but most children aren't going to really mind officers or security or any of those people on campuses. Yeah, they, most kids, they, they're not processing that that fear. They see a police officer and they say, oh, it's a police officer, similar to a firefighter. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the police chief when this happened announced that they, you know, they were looking through the manifesto of the shooter and the shooter said that she was actually considering a different location before the school yeah. and decided yep. against it because the, the security, security, was, exactly. security protocols. So she went after what she perceived as the, the softer target in this instance. So Definitely. do you feel like that made a difference in that sort of case? I think when people say stuff like that, that is even more of a reason to suggest something like getting Man. more security around the schools because she didn't go to the mall because she knew the mall security was too enforced. So. Yep. hundred percent. A absolutely. And she's saying mall. I was under the impression that it was actually a different school. She could be right about that. I haven't, I, I, I uh, that might be slipping, but she's absolutely correct. You see that evidence. That should be a reason to say, okay, from here on out, we're making this decision. We're protecting children like we're protecting jewelry stores. Common sense. That individual, the, the evil shooter that shot up the Christian school in Nashville, they chose that school because there was less of a threat on her life. Learn something from that. This girl is... You can save this one. Now, she did regurgitate the talking point of banning assault weapons. I, I, I heard her say that. But with this amount of logic, you can start to work with that. Somebody that's willing to understand and, and process that information can also be brought around when it comes to the gun debate as well. What should we be prioritizing? What, what, why are we focusing on, on rifles and not... Uh, focusing on better district attorneys and actually enforcing the, the, the laws on the books to prevent these psychotic people from getting firearms? Why are we failing on all that stuff and then still asking for weapons to be banned? Why, wh why not fix up the other issues that we have going on that allows for these homicidal maniacs to be out on the streets? Anyways, you guys, let me know what you thought about Nuance Bros video. I will probably be doing 
a part two on this just because it's a really long video and there's a handful of other fantastic discussions. If you wanna see the full video, the link to his full video is down in the description below. Let me know what you guys thought about my commentary. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button, please, so you get notified the next time that I post. I'll catch you guys next time.